Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are testing some more viral makeup products, things that celebrities have used, things that other influencers have used, and things that have basically got loads of views and are sold out and are really popular. I'm gonna tell you my honest thoughts. If you like these kind of videos, I do them quite often, so feel free to subscribe if you wanna watch videos like this on the regular. While you're at it, I would massively appreciate if you give this a thumbs up and let's do it. The first product that I'm gonna be testing that I'm gonna put on before my makeup, because that's what this is for is the Fenty Skin Blemish Defeater BHA Spot Targeting Gel. I saw an advert for this where they'd put it on their spot. Oh my gosh, what is that? Get off. The girl in the advert had put this on a spot and left it to dry, obviously, done her makeup over the top of it. It was like, it covered over her spot and it's supposed to treat your spot while you've got makeup on. It says that you can put it on AM and PM and you let it dry completely. Oh, before applying moisturizer and or makeup. Shit, I've already put moisturizer on, hang on. Okay, where, I, where I'm gonna be applying it, I'm just gonna wipe off that moisturizer. Get off my face. Ow, this hurts. So this is what it looks like. You just squeeze the tube and it comes out of this little applicator thingy. So I've got a spot here. Let's put a bit on that one. I've got a few down here, which I've now made look really angry because I've just rubbed them with a tissue. But I'm gonna put it on all of these and try and like gently rub it in. I'm very curious to see if this is gonna sort of ball up or peel or look obvious underneath my makeup because most spot creams that I have that sit under makeup, they just sit a bit weird underneath it. So I'm gonna let these dry while I do my eyebrows and for my eyebrows, we've got this. This is brand new and I did see some people on TikTok say that they found it in stores. Maybe by the time you're watching this video, it will be everywhere in stores. I personally couldn't find it in my local boots. So I ordered it off of the Superdrug website because it was out of stock on Amazon because again, it's a product that has gone viral because apparently this is supposed to last and last and last and last. And some people have been wearing this for like two or three days because apparently it is fully transfer resistant and waterproof and it is the zero to brow gel long wear brow gel transfer resistant waterproof step one use spoolie to groom and comb brows into place i got the shade ash brown looks like this so let me just comb my oh! <laughs> Let me just comb my brows into where I want them to be. Lovely stuff. And then, you know what I don't particularly like about this already? It's just a bit of a weird applicator. Like, fair enough if it was a brush, but it's not even a brush. I'm, I don't know, I'm just a bit confused by the applicator. I don't know, I guess you could use a brush if you want to, and I might do that for the front of my brows, but I'm just gonna try and run a light layer of this through my eyebrows. I'm a little bit scared because the people that I saw using this on TikTok, it literally would not come off. So I'm like, if I get this shape wrong, it's over. And I've got those brows for a few days, apparently. Okay. You know what? Not too bad. On the front of my brow, I'm just gonna go really lightly with the excess. It's kind of like tinting my brows rather than adding full on blocky pigment. I don't know, I don't think, mm, how do I explain that? Can you see what I mean? Like it's not super thick, which is good. It's quite a thin formula. Oh no, I think I've put a bit too much product in this one. Obviously you can't draw little brow hairs with this. Oh no, why is that one darker than the It's sticking really well where I do have eyebrow hairs, but can you see on the ends of my brows where I've tried to just draw it onto my straight up skin? It's not really sticking very well. So what I'm gonna do, wait, but I don't wanna put this on the back of my hand, do I? Cause then it's gonna be stuck to the back of my hand for ages. Put some on the box. It's just an interesting applicator. Like I wonder what made them decide to go with that. So I'm gonna take some some of this on an angled brush. This one is the Vive angled brush, which I really like because it's really skinny, which I mean, I didn't expect anything less because Jamie knows what she's doing with her makeup brand. She knows that a lot of brands give us angled brushes that are way too thick. So thank you, Jamie Genevieve. Hmm. Don't know what to think of this. I'm trying to do little brow hair strokes with it, but it's not really working it just goes on kind of thin and watery almost if you build it it does get darker and it does stick to your skin and i'm gonna let these sit and in the meantime you can't even see that i've got any spot cream on like it's completely dried and is flush against my skin you can kind of see this one in the light but that does feel like it's dry. The next thing is this Hourglass Hydrating Skin Tint Veil. I have seen this all over TikTok. I've seen multiple different celebrities using this. I've seen influencers using this. I've seen a lot of people raving about it saying that it's a really nice skin tint. It is so expensive. It is 49 pounds. I know that Hourglass is a high-end brand, but 49 pounds for a skin tint? I don't know about that. It better be pretty bloody good. Um, I was lucky enough to be sent this in PR. I did not pay 49 pounds for it. Um, and I'm not sure I would unless it's the best thing in the world. So I've got to say, I do like the packaging. I think it looks nice. And also you can see the shade through the little H 
window, which I think is pretty cool. I have got the shade two. Ah! You're bloody joking. It's all exploded into the lid. Why is it still coming out? I'm not squeezing it. I didn't even touch it and it's like overflowing. Why is it still coming out the top? Oh, it's actually thicker than I thought it was gonna be. I'm so confused. It's li guys, it literally won't stop. Stop it. I've got like five quids worth of product here <laughs> and in the lid. So on this side, I'm gonna try with my sponge, but it is a skin tint, so I don't usually use a sponge. I just wanted to see how it's gonna sit over that spot treatment. Okay, yeah, with a sponge, very, very, very light coverage. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Don't tend to use sponges for skin tints anyway. I just want to be careful to not like disturb the spot treatment stuff. Dab over those. It feels incredibly lightweight. Like it almost feels like it's sinking into my skin. It does look nice. But considering I put so much on, I thought it would give a little bit more coverage. I know that it's a skin tint. It's not supposed to give crazy amounts of coverage, but just cause you know, I put on a lot. Let's see if we can build it. I would say it is ever so slightly buildable, but you are not gonna get coverage with this. Like, it is not that kind of product in the first place. It feels great. It feels like a moisturizer. It's very lightweight. Like, look how glowy I am. I know that I had moisturizer on, but Jesus, it's like a drink for my skin. It does look nice. It's just giving me like a little bit of tin, the tiniest bit of coverage. It's kind of just evened everything out and it's very lightweight. I do like it. Um, Let me just zoom in on my spots down here. I feel like you can see where I've put the spot cream a tiny bit. Can you see? Like the tiniest bit, there's like a little circle around it, but barely. Let's see what happens when I put some concealer over the top of this spot, because I guess that will be the main test when it's like a thicker product on there. You will never believe this, guys. I'm using the Too Faced concealer. I, I know, I know, it's really shocking. This is the shade Almond. Let's just blend that all in. You know what I've just realized, guys? I didn't even rub my eyebrows to do the transfer test. Uh, I'll do that in a sec. I'll do it before I've set everything. Should really, really, really have done that before I did my foundation, but oh well. I feel like you can ever so slightly see where I've applied that, but it's not that noticeable. And it hasn't seemed to like peel or go weird or lift at the edges or anything yet. I think I can see it because I'm looking for it. And my foundation isn't quite sitting on it the same as the rest of my face. However, I think once I've powdered, and I mean from this distance, you can't really see it, which is good. I'm happy with that. Let's try the eyebrows. Clean hands. Let's take this. That's definitely smudged. That's smudged, hasn't it? What? Okay, wait, hang on. Oh, interesting. There's nothing on my finger. Oh my God. Okay, wow, yeah, no, that is really on there. The only bit, this is so interesting. The only bit that's actually smudged is the bit that was on the very tail of my eyebrow. And I have a feeling that's because there's no brow hairs for it to kind of like stick into, but actually, like my eyebrow hairs seem like they've been stained by it, which is pretty cool. But I mean, yeah, I'm giving it a good old rub and nothing really is coming off on my finger. And it's not like smudging all over the place. Okay, they do feel a little bit tacky still, like a little bit sticky. Let's see if I can just comb them back into place. Has it faded at all? I feel like ever so slightly compared to the other one, it's faded a little bit. Let me just see if it's the same on the other side like actually rubbing all about these eyebrows again. Like maybe the tiniest hint of tint has come, up, come off on my finger, but that eyebrow is still very much there. Why did that side not smudge, but the other one did? Yeah, the tail of this one has stayed on, but the tail of this one got swiped away. Well, I'm happy with that. It seems like it's not really going anywhere. I will film myself trying to take this off later and see if I have any problems, but that's pretty cool. You know what? I feel like this would be a really good thing to bring on holiday because it would last in the sea and all that. If anybody has the Maybelline brow gel, like the tattoo brow gel, it has that kind of rubbery feeling, which is a little bit weird, but you don't really notice the feeling until you try and take it off and realize that it's like stuck. But um, I love the Maybelline tattoo brow gel, because it does last and it is waterproof and it kind of like sticks in your eyebrows until you use an oil-based remover. Yeah, I mean, my eyebrows are still there, aren't they? Like they're still looking really good. Nice. Now let me just go around these, try and fix them up a little bit. For once, I don't have a viral bronzer or blush, so I will be right back. Okay, I've done the rest of my face, like bronzer, blush. What's the other one? Highlight, powder, 
all of that stuff. For my mascara, I have got the e.l.f. Lash and Roll Mascara, the curling and lifting one. Again, I got this from Superdrug, but I went into store today and I didn't see this in store, so I don't know if it's hit the stores yet. I think it was six pounds, so really cheap. This, I think, is quite obviously supposed to be a dupe of the Benefit Roller Lash. I mean, it's called Lash and Roll, and the brush is super similar to Benefit's Roller Lash. This is what it looks like. I think I've maybe tried one or two e.l.f. mascaras in the past, but from what I can remember, they haven't really blown me away. Like they've been all right, but they've not been my favorite. So let's see if this one changes my mind. The brush is definitely giving roller lash, although currently, oh, it's actually doing a really good job at separating my lashes. Weirdly, I know that roller lash is supposed to be a lengthening and sort of like curling mascara. I like roller lash for volume and also length. I find it gives me good volume, but this one is definitely a little bit more natural than roller lash, I think. It doesn't put as much product on the brush, but the brush is really good for combing out your lashes, so it's not really giving any clumps, which is quite nice. You know what I kind of want to try? Because I always do my coats of mascara while the mascara is still wet. But I was watching Brooklyn and Bailey the other day, and they say that they leave their first coat to dry. So I guess, well, that was sort of two coats, but... Let's leave that to dry and then go in with another layer. In my opinion, it's definitely not the same as Roller Lash. It's not giving me that same level of volume. However, it's definitely lengthening my lashes. I've left that to dry. So now let's go in with another layer. I'm starting to get a couple of clumps, but that is actually really lengthening my lashes. Mmm. Let's go in with another coat on this side. Yeah, I really like how the brush is almost working as a lash comb. Wow. It's looking better on this side, I think. I think my lashes are better on that side anyway, but that was the side where I did two coats and then let it dry and then added more. This side, I did one coat and let it dry and then added more, but it is looking really good. It, yeah, like I said, it's not really giving volume, but it's giving really good length. And it has got a tiny bit clumpy with adding the other coats, but brush does a really good job at like separating your lashes out. We will see if this transfers around my eyes for the rest of the day. I think my lashes are looking pretty good. Let me know what you think, but I think my lashes are looking really good, actually. I have been using Lash Serum and I think my lashes have got longer, you know? I don't know, as I was getting into my mid, 20s I was like my lashes are not doing what they used to do and I started using the Olaplex lash serum which is like ridiculously expensive but I do actually think it is doing a good job I think my lashes are growing the final thing that I'm going to test today is the YSL double care balm in the shade 3 cacao oh wait cacao no boundary is it called cacao or cacao no boundary or is the type of lip thing called no boundary god there's so many names on this rouge volupte candy glaze double care balm then it has it in french then it says high color and glossy shine lasting nourish and, re and restore then on the side it says lipstick and then on the top it says candy glaze 3 cacao no boundary okay many names number three <laughs> This is my first ever one of this style of YSL lipstick, um, which is very exciting because I know that these have been popular for years. I did get sent this in a PR package from YSL, which how did they find me and why are they sending me stuff? I honestly could not tell you, but wait, ooh, why does that smell so familiar? Oh my God, what is that smell? This is so random, but I think when I was a kid, I don't even know if these things are still around. There were these little things that you would put in the bath. They had liquid in them and you'd put them in the water and they would dissolve and they were like different shapes. Sometimes they were just round and they were these like squidgy ball things. I'm having flashbacks to my childhood. That is that smell, like a peach jelly popping bath ball, whatever those were called. And I used to just smell them. It smells so good. Anyway, <laughs> this is what it looks like. I've seen people saying that this is like the perfect brown tone, sheer, balmy type lipstick. I've seen so many people with medium and deeper skin tones that have been wearing this and it looks stunning on them. I've also seen people with lighter skin tones using this. It just looks beautiful on everyone that I've seen try this. So I'm gonna try it first with no lip liner and see what it's giving. Ooh, you know what? It's more pigmented than I thought it would be. But yeah, I've seen people saying you don't need a lip liner with this and I don't I don't think you do. Like that is statement enough in itself, even though it's a tinted lip balm. Mmm, it does feel good. It feels really good. It feels really hydrating. It looks really nice. This color on me is not something that I would necessarily pick out for myself. It wouldn't like be my top choice. I do think it looks nice. I like it. I think it goes with this whole kind of like slicked hair, glowy makeup. I think it works nicely. It feels amazing. That is such a nice formula of tinted lip balm. It's really reminding me of the, oh my God, what 
what is the brand? Clinique Black Honey, which I've not actually tried Black Honey, but I've tried the dupes. It's very expensive because it's YSL, but if you're wondering what my thoughts are on it, I do really like it. It feels nice. Ignoring the price, it does feel nice. Would I repurchase this for the price? Probably not. I would probably go for a slightly lighter shade for my skin tone personally, but oh my god, I've seen so many people with deeper skin than me try this, and it just looks stunning and juicy, and it's the kind of like perfect my lips were better sort of shade. I'm going to try and find a dupe because I'm sure that there is one out there. Guys, I'm not even going to lie. I completely forgot that I was supposed to record me taking off this eyebrow product until I'd pretty much nearly taken off my whole makeup. And I just went in with my usual micellar water and it did take a few rounds of scrubbing, but it did come off with micellar water. I had to go over them maybe three times. Did lose a couple of eyebrows in the process, so I would say definitely use an oil-based remover, but it does come off. And if you're wondering about the mascara, it did last all day without smudging, which is great. All right, that is me done. That is my makeup finished. What do you guys think? You know what? I really like most of the things that I put on my face. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If there's anything else that you want me to test, let me know. You know what the most frustrating thing in the world is? The Three new viral foundations at the moment are the REM Beauty Foundation, the Glossier Foundation, and the new MAC Foundation. All of those have got ingredients in that I'm allergic to and probably shouldn't put on my face. And I mean, I could do it for a testing video and I probably wouldn't flare up after using it once. But then I'm like, well, once I've used it once, I'm not gonna keep it because if I use it every day, then it will probably cause me a reaction, which is so annoying. But anyway, I hope you guys are good. Let me know if there's anything else and I will see you in my next video. Bye.